Hello and welcome back to HWLRadio.com. You're here with your main man, Hollywood. And tonight we're going to be breaking down the Bobby Christina story part two. And I hope, and I hope, yeah, is out there paying attention. Because this movie had a subliminal message for black women out there. You know how all y'all is on this kick thing? Like, nigga, you don't tell me what to do. I mean, I know y'all loved that part. She was like, you don't tell me nothing what to do and all this stuff. But if you pay attention to the message, that attitude right there will have you a single, black, angry mother. And that's what, like, you don't even have to be angry. It's like everything is going to be stacked up against you with that attitude there because they... You just gonna be portrayed like it ain't too many things you could say because a person's already gonna have in their mind. She's just an angry black single parent, like the the father of Laffer. You can't. You have to learn how to work together because the message was that if you won't do it, there's a chick somewhere that's waiting. Because as you see, Bobby Brown was not no like possessive controlling type like the situation that they always try to throw into the equation like you trying to control me no i'm trying to give you some fucking advice you turn down your motherfucking mate's advice which turns you guys not even into mates they turns y'all into competitors like y'all on opposing teams now so all this is going on in the house do you think that lebron james chris tristan thompson draymond green and all them and steph curry could keep the fights and everything down to if they was in the same house going through the nba finals no because shit would have erupted like it did in the club so i want y'all to catch that damn message and tone it down humble yourself you'll take advice from your girlfriend but you won't snap at her like she's trying to control you or run you or nobody tells you what to do why not do that for your fucking man that's who you chose that was your teammate that was your partner that you chose to go into the playoffs with so motherfucker work together this is that that i love that that message throughout the whole damn the whole movie the whole story whatever y'all want to call it part two nigga i loved it that message and i think that was enough right there to have the motherfucking show but i'm still gonna tell y'all about what i thought about part two so bobby brown like i told y'all before in part one you see that he did not want to be on the drugs i don't like the way and i'm wondering how whitney houston family feels about the movie because they portrayed her to be the bad person like they made her seem like she didn't give a fuck about bobby brown like shit nigga it's all about to get high and i don't really think that whitney was like that now i believe that the get high can get to a person and take over a person but you know then again (laughs) she was from newark newark new jersey nigga she probably walked outside the dead bodies the robberies to carjackings like the shit was all in front of her face so at the same time she was liable to be one of them stone stone cold hearted chick but at the same time them kind love super hard too it's like the outer shell of what they seen what they've been through but the whole time their whole life they really wanted love but you know, I feel sorry for Bobby Brown, brother. And then another thing. So you mean to tell me Raina died off of power and then she then came back to life as Bobby Brown's daughter? I mean, like, I ain't even gonna go there with that line because, you know, I told you my comedy be a little too harsh. But, nigga, I ain't even gonna say it in a joking way. But it has to suck to every character. Why? See, now her, I'll be like, hey, uh, excuse me, why every motherfucking character I gotta be got a damn dot? Why can't I be the motherfucker of the part two to be continued? Why can't it be me? I mean, that's that's what I'm, I'm feeling about the whole thing. And then the girl, the, Teddy Riley's girl, the one that was at the concert, he picked up and went crazy, yo. And she ended up being his wife. So that was a win-win. She came into his life, looked like he, she fucked him up, but at the same time, it was the best thing that happened, that happened for him. And then she comes back as the manager, which she already knew all along. She wasn't just trying to be manager. You could see it in her damn eyes. Even her brother knew that. Like, nigga, this ain't just about the motherfucking job. I could see you want my brother. Shit, he fucking everybody. <laughs> 
but it was sad when his mother died then the father died right after and then Whitney and the daughter so Bobby Brown man he's really been going through some shit that everybody don't know about and I told y'all it seems like they portraying him to be the bad guy actually both of them was good Whitney just had a problem Bobby had a problem you know they were both good people that's what I'm getting out of digging throughout the bullshit like I got the message the big message probably everybody ain't get but it was great actors dude did a good job playing Bobby Brown I can't think of where I know him from is this good burger I don't know who he is but I, I'm sure I seen him on Nickelodeon but he did a good damn job his brother was like the best actor of the whole damn thing I mean everybody did a good job Whitney I mean the chick to play Whitney she did she did real good too I mean, they all did a good job. It was a good movie. Pretty sure that motherfucker gonna be around and Bobby gonna be getting money off of that for a long time because they did a damn good job on that. So I commend BET for that. They did a good job. But that's gonna be the show for today. Go over to hwlradio.com. Download the radio station app. Make sure you check out the sponsors page. And always remember that it's 24-7 new music, commercial-free, ad-free, none of that shit in a your groove so make sure y'all tune in to that i'm out